it's a test for me. Like, am I who I really think I am? Mm-hmm. You know, Drake said a bar. I've said this. I said this on another a podcast before. But he says, you know, you know it. You know it's real when you are who you think you are. Yeah. You know, uh, I think pudgy is a test. Like, am I who I really think I am? And I and because who I think I am is I think I'm one of the best entrepreneurs to ever live. Mm-hmm. When it's all said and done, that's who mm-hmm. I think I am. I promise. I when I when I'm 50 years old, I I want to be in that conversations like yo he's one of the best to ever do it Mm. and so this is like my first challenge where like true challenge everything else hasn't been a challenge up until this point everything else has been easy dude what's going on guys welcome back to another episode make sure you stick to the end of the video we're actually giving away an nft it's gonna be a surprise so in order to know the rules for the nft contest and giveaway you're gonna have to stick to the end of the video and luca talks a lot of smack (laughs) (laughs) about basketball web3 and things he doesn't like make sure you guys stick to the end of the video no no What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode. Today, we have a very special guest. We'll uh, introduce him here briefly, but before we start this video, make sure you guys comment, subscribe, or make sure you guys drop a like, subscribe if you get any type of value, and let's get this party Let's get this party started. Uh, Luca Nets, what's going on, bro? What's up, bro? How you doing? Good, bro. How are you? Doing great. Just balled your ass in some basketball. So I want to see you ball my ass, I did, bro. I did. I you, did. Got I buckets, you got some good buckets, though. You got some good buckets. Good buckets. You got a few good buckets today. All right. <laughs> Drained a three in your face, bro. Okay, if you, were, if you were to rate your basketball skills one to ten, where would you put yourself? Not today, overall. Today, I played like Kobe Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> so today's all that matters. <laughs> today, I was on fire. I was one of the most important people on the team Nobody, at all times. You were. You did <laughs> do pretty good today. Who was guarding you? Uh, Peter. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> that was why. Yeah, that's I can step against Peter for sure. Wait, Luca, funny mm. enough, is actually a pretty decent basketball player. Yeah. One thing about him is he's he's very tall, so he can block you very easily, yeah. and he can shoot over you. Yeah. But besides that, I'm way more athletic, quicker, and I think sure you have a better. stat, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Who Luka's had more points good. on the board? <laughs> who had more of an impact? Today I had a pretty bad day. Today I had a today was not your day. It was probably the yeah. worst day ever. Yeah, I think it was the headband I was wearing for sure. Yeah, you look like you look like uh, <laughs> Will Ferrell, and that. <laughs> <laughs> it was not your. I don't know what I was day, thinking, dude. bro. I don't know what I was thinking. Cool, bro. Let's get let's get started here. I want to talk about a bunch of stuff today. Obviously, there's some news like Elon. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about you, yeah. Pudgy. Uh, some of the future plans, obviously, and then just the whole Web3 space yep. overall. I think it'll be uh, interesting to start off with Elon, right? So Twitter will soon have the ability to monetize or every single content creator on Twitter is going to have the ability to be able to monetize their content, mm-hmm. right? That's kind of like the first thing Elon's doing right now. How do you think that plays a role into Web3? No, I think it's going to be great because figuring a lot of Web3 lives on Twitter. I think the issue is just like, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'd like have a huge disagreement with his blue check strategy. I think everybody having a blue check is like not advantageous. I think there's like a better strategy for that. So th- that's what I'm more concerned about. And I paid, you know, <laughs> I, paid I paid a bag for my blue check. So I'm like kind of pissed. I'm like, dude, now I got to. Just being honest. So, but beyond that, all, all all stuff aside, like that's like every great platform has like their blue check distinction, and it shouldn't be for like every single person. Like, it yeah. makes no sense. I don't think. I agree. I'm I'm interested to see what happens. Do you think you're gonna ask for a refund if everybody's blue check looks like yours? For sure. I'm gonna bust the dude's balls anyway. But we'll <laughs> see how it's gonna go. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, what are you guys doing at Pudgy? Or actually, before that, tell me. Mm, should we talk about you a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, Tell sure. me more about your story. So you guys just acquired Pudgy. Yep. There's a lot of people in Web3 space who have no clue who Luca Nets is. Yeah. Right? I personally obviously have heard about you, know about you for quite a while now. So walk me through Luca three years ago and how we got to this point. Yeah, I think three years ago, my business model was that I realized, you know, being young and successful in Los Angeles, that influencers had millions of followers, but they didn't have millions of dollars. And so I started building like merchandise brands around you know, influencers likeness. And one of the stores did so well that that person then became like my super affiliate. And like, before you know it, I had like 60 influencers that I was pushing product through. And like, we were just like printing money, like a printing press. And so we did that for about three and a half years. And, um, 
it was great. And then I just decided that like, I wanted to make an impact. I realized that like making cash wasn't necessarily what I, you know, enjoyed doing. I enjoyed, you know, I didn't really have a brand that I could stand behind. People were like, Oh, so what do you do? I was like, I build brands for influencers and you know, there weren't like brands that I was necessarily proud about. Yeah. Uh, and so I decided that I wanted to do two things. One that was venture capital. So I deployed, I think $2 million over 18 months to 16 different businesses. Um, that shaked out really well for me. It was like prime COVID. And then I decided that I wanted to like start building brands. And so I had an interesting stint with a company called Von Dutch. I basically was like their CMO for a year and like brought them back. And I real I didn't realize how powerful what I knew was until Von Dutch. Like I knew I was talented, yeah. but like if I owned Von Dutch, I'd have been worth like a couple hundred million dollars based off like what I did for them, mm. you know? And so I thought to myself, like there's no point in just like not having this type of stuff in house. And then so, uh, and then I'm seeing, you know, I'm going to the full send office, Jesse's office for like a year straight and kind of just seeing that whole operation. I'm just thinking to myself, like, yeah, I got to start my own thing. And then gel blaster comes around another situation where I'm like, oh my God, my power is like so incredible. And then pudgy, then you just see like pudgy in the background. I decided to step up to the plate and just kind of like for the first time, allocate my superpowers into something that, you know, is pretty much mine and a couple other people's, but you know, taking that kind of in-house. Wow. Mm -hmm. A few things I want to talk about. So you invested or you deployed $2 million into 18 companies. Yeah. How many of those failed and how many of those got you an ROI? Yeah, only two of them failed. And nice. I've realized, so like the thing is on like net worth on paper. So if you're like Elon Musk and your stock is liquid, then like on paper, it makes sense. But on paper, like my net worth is probably a fuck ton because of those investments. But I can't sell them. You know, yeah. I, I, I don't have preferred shares. Most investments you don't. Uh, so it's not like I can just go off and like sell them on like the black market or something. So mm -hmm. they're relatively illiquid, but I think I've realized $5 million in the last three years off of those investments, like actual cash mm -hmm. returns. So I've already doubled my money a little bit more. Wow. Uh, but I, I mean, some of the companies I have like five, six, seven, eight million dollars in equity on, I don't know, probably sitting on $30, $40 million on paper, but to me, it doesn't mean anything, you know, yeah, it's like yeah. phony shit. So, thinking. so let me ask you this. What's like, uh, I think this is a perfect segue into like the mentality of trading and investing into NFTs, right? Mm -hmm. Cause I think investing overall comes down to a strategy. Seems like over the last few years, obviously you kind of put together a pretty well done strategy that's allowing you to invest into the right companies or the right people. Right. So what's your mentality when it comes to investing into these people and these companies? It's all founders. So all the money that I've lost and all the money that I've made, I was talking to Peter about this, but one of my, one of my really, really good investments, at least percentage wise was in this company called social snowball, which is Noah tucks. Uh, I love Noah tuck. We're actually like, we're, we're we have like an internal little debate going on right now, yeah. but I put, you know, 30 grand and my equity in social snowball is probably worth a couple million bucks per what I think the company is worth. Mm -hmm. And we were, you know, Noah is a prime example of just founder is an absolute monster. While like everybody was out getting rich and making money, like Noah was just dead set focused on his business. And, and I was talking to Peter about it. It just like personifies the fact that like, these investments are all about the founder. Social Snowball could have easily failed. That thing was about to fail many times, mm -hmm. right? And he just kept going, ran out of money, kept going, nonstop innovating, nonstop building, 12 hours, just like living, breathing every single part of it. And it just comes back to the founder. And all the money that I've lost is because the person I invested in was a Muppet, like a mm -hmm. complete clown, you know? Mm -hmm. And then now I know how to like see through the Muppetry, but it, you can have a shitty idea and a great founder and it's going to work. And you yeah. can have a great idea and a shitty founder and it won't work. It all comes down to the person running the ship. Nothing else. Like I honestly think it's, it quite literally is nothing else. It's going to work if you have, if you have somebody and, and that's not true because sometimes like the market will give you a bad beat or outside situations will screw you. But the way that I look at it now, it's 100% the founder. Like yeah. these things work the great, the best investments I've made, amazing founders, the investments that went to shit, 
And so people ask me like, Hey, invest just like subtly. I don't want to tell them, but I just don't believe in you yet as a founder because I I've learned and been burned now so many times because even before this investment, I was making smaller investments, Yeah. even though I've, I've lost a lot of $25,000 checks, but I'm coming back to this point. Like I'm, I'm referring to the big checks I've cut. Yeah. The big checks have only had two failures where they went kaput, but I've cut a lot of $25,000 checks and they're all like, I'm probably like half for half. I'm probably 50% win rate now mm-hmm. at this point. One thing stood out to me is you said founders, but you didn't say experience, right? Mm-hmm. I think there's a big narrative in the NFT space that, hey, you have to bet on founders that have experiences specifically. Yeah. Do you think that's also true? Or do you more so look for qualities of a founder that say, this guy is resilient, this guy is smart, right? His head's over his shoulders. He's going to keep going. Like, what are those traits that you're speaking of when you take a look at the founder and you're like, okay, this guy's a Muppet or he's not? Yeah, I think traits are everything. Um you know, this, this was interesting because I was talking to a VC yesterday or mm-hmm. a couple of days ago, I tweeted about it because I was kind of subtweeting him, <laughs> but he was basically saying that we didn't have the experience. We were young. We were a young group of people, mm-hmm. just transparency speaking. I'm at the point where I'm now going to start raising for Pudgy. Uh, and he just basically said that we were young and we lacked experience. And I thought to myself, I was like, that's just really interesting to hear because the great companies, like a majority of the great companies that have come out of, especially in tech yeah. that have come out of all been started by 20, 21, 22 year old founders. And so it's just like, how, how can you just like, how, how, how silly it is to look at somebody's age when, especially like you put my resume versus anybody's and it's like put my resume against a 50 year old guy. I have a better resume than he does in mm-hmm. six years of being an entrepreneur. So I just think it's just pretty silly. Um, that's why I said results, you know, results is greater than experience. Like I, I judge people by results, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's something in our internal hiring process too. You know, we had this kind of like, um, KPI, like that we were just kind of, or not KPI, but this, this, um, uh, this guideline that we just wanted to start hiring people with experience. But I just told the team, I was like, Hey, like, yes, we want people with experience, but if somebody shows that they can execute and has the results to show it, just because they don't have the experience does not mean we shouldn't take them seriously Mm -hmm. because so many people could have turned me down and did turn me down because I didn't have the experience. And now look at me now, I'm like running laps around them on a bad day, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I, especially in web three, and I I might say this and people might disagree, but I really think it's a young person's space. Mm. I don't think this is a space and not to, and not to mean you can't be, you know, 45, 50 innovating, not by any means, but I think the people who are really going to lead the charge here are the 20, 20 year olds, you know, that's just how my take, I I think we're the people that are going to be working on this 30 years from now. Like if you're 50 now, you're not going to be 80 working on this stuff. You know, we are really going to be the people that are going to give this our life until the day we die Mm -hmm. and actually put in 40, 30 years of actual effort here. And we also are native to the internet in ways that this older generation is not. Mm -hmm. And so we understand how the internet works in a way that I just don't think they'll ever be able to understand for the sole fact that we just grew up on it. Like our brains were sponges around Mm -hmm. the iPhone and around the internet, the way that theirs weren't. Uh, And I think if you're talking about what the next chapter of that looks like, it's not going to be written by, you know, people who can recollect and remember the days where the internet didn't even exist. I think it's going to be, you know, I I think to really reinvent the internet, it's going to be the people who grew up on the internet that are going to reinvent it. Mm -hmm. So that's my take. You you said some, obviously, I don't know if this is your first time publicly saying it, but you guys are raising? Yeah. Is it your first time? Yeah, it's my first time. Okay. So we've seen companies like Doodles raise at, what, 700 million valuation? Yeah. And Yuga Labs at a $4 billion valuation. What are you guys raising for and where do you kind of see yourself? How, How do those conversations go? Yeah. So I basically think, you know, if you put our, you know, statistics up against the rest, you'll see that our output is like significantly better than a majority of projects. And I just kind of want to put fuel to the fire. Like I've shown the world that we can do take nothing and turn it into something and be competitive. And I think the only way to kind of even out the playing field is just give us a little bit of money. I don't need as much money as the next person. I don't need a hundred million dollars. I don't need $50 million. I don't need $30 million. Give me $5 million. Give me $10 million. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I, I, I can turn, I, I can, the way that I'm seeing people spending and executing 
their $50 million is my $5 million, you know? Mm -hmm. And so for me, uh, I don't really need much, but I definitely want to even the playing field because at some point, uh, that's going to have to happen, you know? Yeah. Do you feel like you guys have a missing piece beside, I guess, the fuel to the fire that is like holding Pudgy from being the next thing? Hmm. I think there's like, we, we just need more team members, dude. Mm. More, more, at least on the development side, like on the tech side, yeah. Lorenzo needs help, dude. And Lorenzo is an absolute beast and a monster and he's not getting tired. And like, I don't think burnt out is in his vocabulary, but I know my team well enough to know that if I don't get them support soon, like real support, not just people writing code, but like real leadership and like, you know, people that, you know, will do without being told mm -hmm. type of inf infrastructure. I, I have a good finger on the pulse as to like what we need on a, on a team side. And again, I think that just comes with, I'm not going to do that. These are people that need $200,000 salaries. Like I have 14 yeah. people working for me and my burn is 50 or $60,000 a month. If you look at that, it's like, no, the highest paid person in our company is paying, getting paid five grand a month. <laughs> One, because a lot of the people believe in me and yep. believe in the fact that like, I told them, Hey, you guys are gonna have to sacrifice, but I promise I'm going to make this worth it for you. And so they're all taking a major haircut and taking like pennies on the dollar. But eventually we're already six months into that. And you know, I can't go two years with the promise that, Hey, I'm going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. At some point I got to start taking care of people. If not, they're going to stop believing in my word and then things are going to get ugly. Yeah. And so I'm in this, I, you know, I've, but the, the project is not in a place to drop a coin or to drop a mint or, you know, any of these yeah. like huge li liquid liquidity events that other projects do. And so I'm coming to the realization that if I want to not only keep this thing going at the pace that we're going, but to like really amplify the pace. Because to me, like I I'm like, even, even today I'm like not okay with our pace. Like I'm like, yeah. I want to go so much faster. Um, uh, then we just have to raise money. It's the only thing. And, and you look at doodles, you look at V friends, you look at Moonbirds. I mean, mm -hmm. these are all recent raises. People are clearly valuing these things at a certain amount. Um, uh, I, I'm not asking for even remotely in the same stratosphere of what those people mm -hmm. are asking, but I, I, yeah. I mean, I personally don't see a reason why you guys don't race successfully and you race quick. Yeah. I mean, when I think pudgy penguins, I don't even have to think pudgy penguins. You cannot go on crypto Twitter any time of day and not see a pudgy penguin profile picture. I agree. And I can say, I don't know if I can say the same thing for doodles, moonbirds, or any of those projects you just mentioned. Yeah, I mean, they all have their interesting value propositions. I just, I think people underestimate the Pudgy Penguins community. Like, I don't think another project has the type of affluent talent in the Crypto Web 3 space, mm -hmm. a part of their ecosystem, the way that Pudgy does. Like, Pudgy truly has, I and this is just my opinion, I may be biased, but I've, I've really, like, once the type of holders that I've met, I'm like, no way you're a yeah. holder you're running billions of dollars of transactions a day and like you're the ceo of this company and like every ceo of every major crypto company exchange that i know of owns a pudgy penguin like there's a whole group chat and it's not my place to dox or say anything but like there, there there's a hundred billion dollar in in capital in a group chat that owns pudgy penguins like, so wow. I mean, that guy who bought the uh, left-facing penguin, he spent, yeah. what, 300 ETH? 400. 400 ETH. Yeah. <laughs> how how tight is your relationship with him? How did that happen? Is there, a, is there a story to it? Have you spoken about that? Yeah, we just met in N NFT NYC, and I was wearing the Red Octobers. Yeah. And he was <laughs> like, dude, easy. you're crazy. It was like, these are so fly. And he, we just you know automatically hit it off. And he just decided to step up to the plate. He, like myself, made his first bag off of Pudgy Penguins, mm -hmm. NFT bag. So part of the reasons why I felt like I had an obligation to buying pudgy penguins is my first trade, like big trade NFT trade was a pudgy penguins trade. Mm. And I made, it's one of those things where, you know, if you get into NFTs and you lose money and you're just like, screw this, I'm out, you know, yeah. like on to the next. But the first trade PFP I ever bought was a pudgy penguins and I bought a ton of them and I made a killing. Yeah. 
And I, and then it just gave me the bug. And then all of that money that I made from there, I moved it into board apes and all of the other projects. And then we already know how that went, you know? <laughs> right. And then, and then you're like looking back at it and it's like, yo, you turned, you know, 50 grand into millions. And you're just like, it all started with the pudgy penguin. So I was like, I, I have an obligation to buy this thing. And my gut was telling me to buy it. I don't, it's my first time trusting my gut, like really trusting my yeah. instincts. So We'll see how it goes, but I have every intention to crush everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that's really fascinating to me, bro, is the is the way you speak, right? You say a word called obligation, mm -hmm. right? And I think any business you do, you always say, hey, my obligation to these people is to do X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. When I hear other founders, it's never obligation. It's like, hey, we want to try to do this, right? Yeah. Our goal is to have fun. So what what makes you take that approach of like, hey, I owe these people something. Why do you feel that way, bro, when you're the one who came in and bought this company and it's not the other way around? It's pretty interesting. You know, one thing that's been really passionate about, you know, these last couple of years with me, like the most, one of the most, you'd ask me like, what's the most fulfilling thing you've ever done? Mm. You know what I would say? I would say Nets Trades and Nets Commerce, as stupid as that sounds, <laughs> because I made so many people rich, especially mm. Nets Trades. Like I stand by that. I re ask anybody who is really around in yeah. COVID, but that's trades. Kids turn hundred dollars into millions, dude. Like <laughs> legit, you know. Uh, even Nick, who's my CMO, before him and I were even cool, he was like, "Bro, I put five hundred bucks and I turn into five hundred grand." It was like shit coin season. Holy it was like we, we were the king of shit coins. We really yeah. were. Uh, that's kind of what we were known for. But the point of the matter was, is that was like super fulfilling to me. And so for me, think about this. This like sounds a little strange and like, I hope people don't misinterpret this, but I, I have a moment that if I do my job with Pudgy, I could make all of my holders rich, mm. you know? Mm. And like that, like, I think the most coolest thing Yuga did is just like everyone who believed in them from the beginning mm -hmm. was able to rub it in the faces of everyone who didn't believe, Yeah, you know? Yep. And I just, I just want so bad for my holders to just rub it in the face of the non-believers and just be mm -hmm. so up because of the effort that I did. It's like, this is like part of like an, it's almost like ego. Like, yeah. I, I hope I don't sound like an egomaniac, but, the, but I do, I do like, I want, I, I want the pudgies to prevail and I just want people to just feel like complete morons for doubting it. It just, it's like the, it's, it's again, it comes back to like, this is a dark fuel. Like this is an unhealthy fuel, mm -hmm. but it's a very effective one. And it, and it's, and, and it's powerful. And I want people to just, I want the people who believed, who preached the pudgy word, who stood by everything to, to like, when it's all said and done, just absolutely rub it in, uh, in people's faces. Because I think that's, I think it's going to happen. And, and it's, it's my opportunity, like. I've always been trying to uplift people and put people in positions to win. Like that's been my reputation for so many years. I've always tried to like be a role model and show people, you know, like being, Great. you know, you know, exactly. Like money isn't money isn't everything, but you shouldn't spend your life surviving. Like, I think this yeah. is important. Like that month mm -hmm. surviving sucks. Um, and this is like, I can build this business and do the, if I make the right steps and the right moves, like mm -hmm. I can affect 4,500 people like in a really positive way. Mm. That's powerful, dude. That like, is, you I mean, know, I'm sitting in the room with you here and I can feel it. Yeah, I, I can feel it and I can see it. I, what do you think or not? What do you think? This might be a premature question this time in the podcast, but what's the ultimate goal for budget and how long you think it'll take? That's an interesting one. I think, um, there's, there's, <laughs> There's the correct answer and then there's yeah. the real answer, yeah. you know? Of course. You know, I'm not going to pretend and sit here like I didn't get into this because I didn't think it was a good business decision. I think I've, I've I think I've done like a you know, I don't want to misjudge people and like be like this cornball and just say like I want to just make an impact and I want to help like cuz but, but I genuinely do. Mm -hmm. Like I really think the Pudgy Penguins IP is going to warrant that. Yeah. But like I also want to be honest and tell people that like I am doing this to make money, right? Like why, like there, there's an opportunity here and, I, and truth be told, like if we're being completely honest and I've never said this again publicly, so you've got some good clips, some alpha. but the reason why I stepped down from gel blaster, which is like a super successful company. Cause I kind of just like was a CMO there was, and I was like, okay, gel blaster or pudgy. 
is because I believed Pudgy could be a billion dollar company quicker than mm-hmm. Gel Blaster could. Uh, and so, you know, part of this for me is like a legacy play. And I want this to be my first unicorn under my belt. And I think it's going to be, you know, a huge moment for me to, to kind of do that, uh, to kind of separate myself from, Hey, you know, we know how to move product. I don't know. There's something about like a direct consumer and consumer product, good brand. Like I just still don't feel like it's not that cool to me. Yeah. yeah. Like it just, some, it's just I, a product. I, dude, it's just like anybody can do that shit. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I look at it through a wrong lens. Cause I think some people would argue cause maybe you build a fashion over. It's like, dude, rich yeah. at the end of the day is laughing at everyone, you know? <laughs> uh, so maybe I'm looking at it the wrong light, but I always, you know, when I was younger, I always wanted to be in like Silicon Valley and yeah. like one of these tech guys, like I listened to all, all of my idols and the people that I respect the most are all, you know, from Steve jobs to, you know, just like, that's always was my dream. And this is the first business that I've been in a leadership position. Like this isn't clothes. This isn't streetwear. This isn't, you know, toys or, you know, product. Like that stuff is great. Don't get me wrong. But you know, if I do this right, you know, this, this is like, this is like tech consumer product. This is like all the things I'm good at. Plus this whole other world that I've never been immersed at. I'm immersed in and it's like my first time that I can actually, you know, if I, if it's, it's, it's a test for me. Like, am I who I really think I am? Mm-hmm. You know, Drake said a bar. I've said this, I said this on another a podcast before, but he's, he says, you know, you know, it, you know, it's real when you are who you think you are, yeah. you know? Uh, I think pudgy is a test. Like, am I who I really think I am? And I, and cause who I think I am is I think I'm one of the best entrepreneurs to ever live. When it's all said and done, that's who I think I am. I promise. I when I when I'm 50 years old, I I want to be in that conversations. Like, yo, he's one of the best to ever do it. Mm. And so this is like my first challenge, where like true challenge. Everything else hasn't been a challenge up until this point. Everything else yeah. has been easy, dude. This is this this though. I told Lorenzo I was talking. I was like, if this fails, if this goes to zero, like zero you percent know, royalties, floor price goes to point zero zero one. This, this was my master's degree already these last six months. I got a Wharton master's degree in business because I've learned so much. Yeah. I've, I've evolved so much. Every business that I tackle after this will be a cakewalk, dude, compared to this. It will be so easy. I'm thinking about all the businesses that I've like had in my notes. Like I have a note that I've been writing since 15 with like 500, you know, business ideas. Wow. Yeah. It's like unbelievable. Uh, and I, I, I can add to that to this day. And if for some reason this went to shit, I, I could walk into any business any day of the week and I would absolutely crush. And so I'm thankful for it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I've evolved into a monster, dude, a complete monster, mm-hmm. but I like it. So what are, this might be some, some game here for founders and maybe for people in the community that are helping other projects. What are like three things that really stood out to you that are, like you came into Pudgy, you didn't expect, and you learned three lessons about web three specifically. Yeah, and I think the answer will be both for Web3 and Web2, but yeah. I, it's a pretty good answer. One, community is everything, no matter if you're in a Web3 business or a Web2 business. Mm-hmm. Second would be be empathetic. Don't underestimate people's concerns and problems, both applicable to a Web3 and a Web2 business. Mm-hmm. And I think last but not least, be a visionary. Mm-hmm. And this is applicable both to Web3 and Web2 business think fucking bigger than everybody else. Yeah. People think too small. People dream too small. Dream big, bigger. Think bigger. You know, want more. Not just like, I think a lot of people's visions are so petite. I talked to so many founders in this space. Yeah. I feel so bad for so many holders because <laughs> I know, I know so many projects. I'll, I'll see like people on Twitter like shilling this project. Like this guy is so good. I'm just like, oh my God, you have no idea, kid. I just <laughs> talked to this founder and you were in such bad hands. This dude is such a Muppet. You were, you were going to zero. I promise you, you just don't know it yet. And I wish I could say something, but yeah. obviously I can't. But oh my God, these, there are so many just absolute do nothingers floating around here. And I'm just, I'm just, you know, people are, are, you know, they'll do like an announcement and people are yeah. so hopeful. I'm just like, you have no idea what's going on in the <laughs> background because th- this person's not capable of taking you, but it's, it's fine. You know, they'll, they'll learn the space will purge and we'll have another bowl and we'll be the whole th- same thing all over again. Same thing all over again. 
let me ask you this. So recently, because again, talking more about the IP and, and the impact side of Pudgy, right? I think you guys do a very well job bringing in new users, not investors, right? To the IP. And I think that's something a lot of people don't understand in the space. That it's not always about doing things just to have somebody buy the NFT right away, right? And I think like in e-commerce, we call that top of the funnel, right? Recently, again, we can talk about this, like we've seen the whole red pill movement come across right mm-hmm. which is like awaken your mind uh don't trust the government you know leave, leave the matrix yeah leave the matrix <laughs> so when i look at pudgy it's more so self-love right impact happiness how does how do those two messages kind of compete and is is there a was there a strategy behind the, the approach that you guys took with it it wasn't it so obviously there was a strategy i knew that stuff converted right yeah. so like from but to my core, the problem with me is I felt I was kind of ashamed of some of the businesses that I've started because I, I didn't think that I just wasn't proud of them. And so when I went, when I took over Pudgy, I was like, what's something I can be proud of, yeah. you know? And at a minimum, like go on the Pudgy Penguin Instagram, go at the comments. Mm-hmm. Again, I don't care. This thing can go to zero tomorrow. And I would still be proud of what we did because of all the people that were helping. Yeah. And I've been saying this for years, like, how do I help people on a mass scale? And I think Pudgy can be a vehicle to do that. And so I'm extremely proud of what we did there and that messaging. But it is it is effective. I think it it creates really great brand loyalty. Um, but at the end of the day, like I'm super genuine in that message. I did not do that because I thought it was a good strategy. Like to my core, people who know me, people like yourself, mm-hmm. that is really what I want to do. At the end of the day, we all die. You know, what's your purpose? What's your legacy? It's what you did to make the world a better place while you were here. And yeah. I think Pudgy, you know, will be that as long as somebody's running the company, whether it's myself, somebody else, or, uh, you know, as long as that message is being sent, I know that I helped start that message. And it, it's it's one that I think impacts people. The whole, I mean, people are, we're, we won't get it, because this, this might be off topic, but just like the whole red pill. I, I think, there's similarities in the sense that they're both a position, mm-hmm. right? Like my position is self-confidence, y- love. Y- exact, exactly. And then their position is just like hate in a sense because it's like don't trust this guy. Believe in yourself. Like go opposite of everyone else. It's just such nonsense, dude. And and, yeah. and, I, and it's crazy because a lot of people that I respect are pushing that narrative. Mm. And it's just like I feel like people are just so – people just want something to like – get their testosterone going about something. And, and, and it's really the problem I hate about this whole matrix shit is it's making, it's making something else. The problem, Yeah, you know, it's not the fucking government's fault. It's not the fucking grocery stores fault. It's not the Republican or the Democrats fault. It's not the institution's fault. It's not the Rothschild puppet mastering this thing in the bath. It's none of their faults, yeah. but the whole red pill matrix shit is just like, it's like their fault. Like, this is what the government will do. Yeah, sure, dude. Like, it doesn't take a, if you didn't already, I, I knew this shit in eighth grade. Like, yeah. I, I, I saw through this stuff in seventh grade. So if you didn't see through that, then you, uh, again, we're just different types of people. Yeah. But I knew this stuff when I was like a, a, a teen, a, an early teen, dude. Yeah. So for me, it's it's just like, like, I don't, I don't know. Because like you said, there's that connotation of hate. And it's just yeah. like, ugh. I don't know why people just can't be free. Like I don't look at people like black, white, Asian, or Mexican. I grew up in a classroom where everybody was like, there were so many different ethnicities. Mm -hmm. I just look at people straight, like who you are. I judge you by your character. You know, I do, you know, I eat food that I think is, you know, good for me. Obviously I know what's good. I know what's bad. Do my own due diligence. I don't let like people don't understand that they they're getting told to be independent (laughs) by a person. And then they're and then they're like following, following that person. So th- this like person preaches like independence from the government, independence from the school system, from the gr- from the, the 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 manufactured food. And then and then that person's like, oh my god, you're right. I've been indoctrinated indoctrinated by this you know system. And then and that yet they like the, the, then they just like migrate like sheep yeah. to a wolf and then just follow this person who's just enlightened them. It's just like it, it's. I don't know, bro. People are people are different. I, I I wish people saw things like maybe how I see it, and some of the people around me see it. I know you kind of see things mm-hmm. the same way as me. 
Uh, but it's sad, dude. I just feel like I wish people just think for themselves, you know, figure things out themselves rather than just always looking to somebody to enlighten them. Like, yeah. go read a book, dude. Yeah. Enlighten yourself. Think mm-hmm. of your own ideas. People mm-hmm. just love that. It's easy to go take somebody else's thoughts and just go run with it. People just need to start thinking for their freaking selves. Yeah, I think I'm a firm believer in the idea of like, whatever your life circumstances are, it's because of you and nothing else. hundred percent, dude. Because there's people living in that same circumstance, maybe even worse to have came out. So it's like, there's no reason why you're not. Yeah. I think the only thing I can't speak about is of like the kid in the Gaza strip getting bombed on, you know, I, I don't know yeah. what that is, but I'm, but I agree with you. If you're in America, if you live in America, it doesn't matter if you're in Watts or it doesn't matter if you're in Beverly Hills or Chirac, it doesn't matter any, you have a public school system, yep. you have a bus you have an internet connection. You can make it if you're in America. I, I can't speak for anywhere else because I don't, you know, I, I would I would argue Europe is probably the same. But again, you know, maybe not if you're in Afghanistan. You yeah. know, that might be tough. I mean, bro, I came here 10 years ago. I didn't even know sushi was a thing. Yeah, I had no right. clue you're, you're how to Syria. use it. Yeah, I'm from Syria. It was middle of the war, bro. I came here. I didn't even know what computer crazy. internet was. Like, we literally had to go to a computer store, bro, to rent internet hours just to go on, like, Hotmail, I remember. That's crazy. Like, literally. So coming here and, like, looking back at 10 years, and I'm like, wow, I've accomplished a lot. So it's, it's really interesting to see what I can do with the next 10 years. Right. Right? And I think that's for a lot of people. Um, okay. The idea of your success is measured by the amount of impact you have on other people. Yeah. 100%. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, I'm just... Uh, thing is, is, is criminals have money. Drug dealers have money thieves have money Mm. scammers have money some kid in you know barcelona bought shiba inu at one millionth of a cent just because his friend told him to and now he became a kid worth 30 million dollars like are these people successful like truly like are they successful no they can't be you know so like a ferrari and a nice house and all of these things can't warrant success because if I'm a murderer, if I'm a cartel member and I cut people's head off for a living and I sell drugs and, but I'm living like a baller in a crazy mansion with five Ferraris in the driveway, people are brainwashed to think that, you know, these things are successful that you'd be so surprised. I mean, we were talking about this, but I know so many guys that are just like ridiculously flexing on Instagram. You would you know, like, I just, they're scamming dude. Like yeah. I know. And it's not just, it's not like credit card scamming. It's, it's like pay me for my Amazon automation store, 25 racks, 30 racks, yeah. 50 racks. They're hitting, you know, a person a day making, you know, a million a month. It's like, dude, you're a criminal, bro. You just haven't been freaking pounced on yet. Mm-hmm. So you're not a boss. You're not an influence. You're not a top dog. You're none of the above, bro. You're a clown. But the outside looking in because of the way people have been brainwashed, it's like, ah, oh, nah, because he's got a Ferrari and a Lambo. He's successful. he's successful. And I think people need to like unbrainwash themselves because that's not success. One of the most successful people out right now is Alex Ramosi. Why? Because he's spending his life helping people, mm-hmm. giving people real value all the freaking time. That's success. People that are successful is I watched a 60 minutes episode of this woman who sends, you know, sandwiches to orphans across the border in Mexico. And she does it every day and she wakes up. She's mad successful. She's more successful than any of these bozos. Right. And I think success is also like what it means to you. I think success is two things. The impact you have on others and the peace and the happiness you find in yourself. I know people that, you know, backpack the world uh, or the country and like don't even have a place to stay and, you know, climb mountains and rocks and shit. Uh, they're successful, dude. Yeah. They're way more success. Like for the Ferrari and the Rolex, and this is something I really need to get over because I'm still battling with my like, insecurities from when I was poor. But that shit does not mean success, dude. Mm-hmm. Success is like this, like how somebody really feels. You know how many rich people that are, you know how, like for years, I was the richest kid out of all the, like the e-com kids and like all the kids from that era. And I was miserable, bro. I was mm-hmm. dead ass miserable. From like 2019 to like 2021, I was miserable, bro. Hated my life. I was literally just like completely like, but I, but on Instagram and on my story, you would be like, oh my God, dude, this dude's lit, yeah. you know, because I made you think that. So it's like, stop. You can't envy people on social media because you don't really know what they're going through for real in the background. Mm-hmm. And so that's like the problem is like the social media is such a brainwash, dude. It's such like, it, it, it. It, it quite, I, I used to never think I was this guy. I was telling Peter this, but I was like, dude, I was never going to be the guy that 
like I never like that would like tell my kid not to use the phone. Like yeah. I was like, why the fuck would I ever do that? Go use the phone. I used to hate when my mom tried to do that. My mom couldn't control me because she was a single mom. But dude, I promise when I have kids, that's not flying with me. I, you're not on the social medias, bro, because it's a legit brain fryer. Yeah. It's like putting your it's like putting your brain into the toaster, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you're like completely getting fried. And now TikTok, it's saying that like the Chinese are like pushing certain narratives to yeah. you like, like they should if you're competing country to country. I mean, that's a great strategy on the China's end. You know, I mean, think about it. Make yeah. make make your only competing Sword. continent or country, you know, fry their the use brains and just program them program the program your country with all the good shit yeah <laughs> crazy yeah so, i heard tiktok in china is literally all education all educational content and then here they're like dude i go on tiktok is literally just girls shaking like their their body like it, dancing it's okay this <laughs> like, is really interesting right because i was talking about this the other day with uh some of my friends too and i was like this is why i think elon's or not this is why i think twitter is going to take over instagram Because one, if you take a look at Instagram, their main goal is always to keep you hooked on the app with things that'll grab your attention. AKA, if you're a guy, your for you feed is nine out of times, girls, drugs, rappers, whatever the case may be. If I go on Twitter, my feed does not have any of that. None of that. And it's because I don't follow any of that. Same thing for Instagram. So I think with Elon coming into the space, I think if that algorithm stays that is i mm. think it's gonna be very helpful and I agree. very big for the space i agree dude um what's one lesson that you had to unlearn in order to take a leap forward in your life a lesson that i had to unlearn yeah that's a complex one that's an interesting what's a lesson that i had to unlearn to take a leap forward in life um I guess that I, I I guess I learned the lesson that I didn't like business partners, and then like in the beginning, in the first my first couple of businesses, I was getting screwed by everybody I was working with, mm-hmm. and then I was like, I'm just gonna do it by myself. And then that was a lesson that I learned. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do everything by myself. And then I had to unlearn that because I realized <laughs> doing it by yourself sucks. Yeah, the solopreneur journey never works. No. Um, talk to me more about some pudgy stuff you guys have coming up what's uh what's it looking like obviously you guys got the cartoon series right coming up or it's not necessarily a cartoon series but yeah we're gonna wrap that up i you know i'm so i think up until this year this whole year for us i've kind of been testing like what matters to people input versus output so Mm -hmm. i think you know i'm excited to start 2023 i think 2023 is like when the real work begins okay because 2022 a lot of the infrastructure we had to set up, we had to get our ducks in a row. We had to understand, you know, what things are going to go where. We had to develop some product. Things were taking time, really refine the strengths of the team, and, and then like ship products and see what resonated and what people really liked and what people didn't. And so at the end of the year, we would have shipped like two or three really interesting moments that I think are going to tell us where where we stand in terms of like which directions we need to lean into. Mm-hmm. And I think 2023 is going to be like leaning into the things that we saw work and then only do that. You know, I'm in a unique situation. I have to work backwards with Pudgy. Everybody else has like an advantage over me in the sense that like they created their world, they created their destiny. Like I'm working backwards on something. So I think my approach has to be more methodical uh, than somebody else's approach, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but so so i'm i i have to see what sticks excuse me yeah yeah. so i'm just i'm trying to see what sticks right now um is there like a major event you're looking forward to in 2023 that's like really gonna make a lot of noise and feel free to share yeah 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 i mean obviously or a product that you guys are gonna launch i I mean obviously uh, but 2023 i'll know if i'll know if pudgy penguins is, is gonna be a huge toy or not now I'm going to do everything in my power and everything I know how to do. And I've got some things up my sleeve that none of these dudes know how to do that. I'm very confident in my ability to get it there. Yeah. But 2023 is really going to be a, you know, beyond just certain verticals that we want to lean into. It's going to be a world domination. Like, can we, can we really 
invade the hearts and minds and everyday consumers. Mm-hmm. Like, are do people want these pudgy penguins in the real world? You know, I know they want them in the Web three world, and then I, I I know I know I'll make them want it in the Web two world. Yeah. But that's going to be really the focus. And also, OpenSea just posted some loser. What's up with all these losers, dude? <laughs> I, I and I'm not saying I don't know. I mean. I'll stand by that statement of OpenSea removes creator royalties because it's just like loser. They basically posted yesterday that they're yeah, going to, that, that they're just going to allude to it. And I'm like, what is wrong? Because I'll tell you this, if OpenSea removes creator royalties, I'm going to come in and I'm going to make a fucking marketplace and I'm going to get in the marketplace business. I promise you, dude, I will. Yeah. Because I'm going to show these losers how to fucking do it. And I'm going to, I'm going to raise, I'm going to do whatever I need to do. I'll, I'll, uh, because it's like ridiculousness at this point. Vision Micro. I'm gonna call Coinbase and I'm gonna like get a meeting with Coinbase and be like, "Hey, let's work something out." Because I, I'll, I, I want to prove a point. People think they're building freaking setting rockets to Mars, dude. You're not. Yeah. You're writing lines and lines of code. This is like it's already written, been written a million times before. I, I, I don't know. You, we might have to blurt that out, depending on what we'll talk about it. Because I have a good relationship with them right now. But honestly, like I don't give a, I don't give a shit about a relationship if they remove creator royalties. I yeah, I mean, two shits. it's a very sensitive Screw topic, you. right? I feel like it's very weird because I feel like it's the loser. whole point of royalties and like crypto. That NFTs, was the biggest yeah, narrative that biggest blew narrative. this up, dude. Yeah, Are you guys literally. like living under a rock? Does nobody understand anything about anything? Like it is so obvious. And I thought OpenSea was like the only one with like really good VCs in their ear, really good leadership, like mm-hmm. stating the obvious. I mean, does not does nobody understand the content creator business and that NFTs are is quite literally the content yeah. creator business? It's like it's like baffling to me. Somebody needs to put me on a panel with all of these Muppets sitting down, and I would love to get in a debate with them. Somebody like NFT NYC, if you know what's good for your you know viewers or something. <laughs> if any of you real big conferences want to put me on a panel with OpenSea or Magic Eden CEO. And and it's if OpenSea goes to no creative royalties, I would love to rip them a new one. They would never beat me in this argument ever. It's impossible. Who's, who's, and the thing is, is a VC's job is to keep these people in line. Yeah. Like, how do you not see the obvious? I, I, I have no idea what these VCs are telling their people. I have no idea. I, I, I have no clue, dude. But- if they move, if OpenSea moves to, and depending on when we publish this, we'll know a little bit more. Yeah. But if OpenSea moves to no creator royalties or optional, what a loser term, optional. <laughs> it's like optional, As a dude. consumer, you get to option to pay taxes. Imagine, yeah, exactly. It's Imagine, like, okay, so make let me sense? make, it only makes sense if you make your marketplace fee optional, yeah. asshole. Exactly. You, you freaking hypocrite. It's like total ridiculousness. Yeah. I will actually, and I, I, I told, I told Lorenzo this. I said, I don't give a shit, dude. I will go on my last freaking dollar, and I'll, I'll might have to pick. I might have to go into my. If we don't raise money, I'll go into my treasure chest, and I'll just be like, dude, I'll come for the marketplace business, <laughs> and I, and I will sit there, and I will rally the creators so freaking hard because I got a voice. None of these guys have a voice like yeah. I do, and I, I know that for a fact because if, if not, I would, I would have heard the Magic Eden CEO or the OpenSea CEO. I've got a voice and I will rally the creators in a way that nobody's been fucking rallied before. And I will take all of your market share and you guys can keep the traders. And I will, I will literally copy open C's UX UI to a T. I don't need to reinvent <laughs> shit. I'm going to get a group of developers. I'm going to say, copy that shit to a freaking T and I'm going to put my voice on a pedestal. I will go on every, I will do a road show. I will go, I will make every short. I'll be like Alec Hermosi with the content, the content. <laughs> I swear to God, they think they're, I watch, I'll be such a problem for these guys and I will rally all of the content creators and all, and everybody will come to my side and then they'll be freaking extinct. I could extinct them, but I don't want to because I like OpenSea. I think they're phenomenal for now. But if they change creator royalties, watch, I'm going to show you, I'm going to, I'm going to make them and look, they're all going to switch back once I take all their market share. Look, it's like ridiculousness, dude. You know what it is? I think the, the whole Web3 space is copycat space. Copycat. Like Losers. No, no visionaries, dude. No yeah, vision. No visionaries. I feel like it's everything is copycat. Like we see in <laughs> NFT projects. We see it in marketplaces. Okay, one marketplace says one announcement. Everybody else runs behind it. So it's like, when are people actually going to start innovating and trying something new? And I, when I look at the whole open sea situation, I'm like, dude. You guys trying to like they're more competing than Magic Eden and they're trying to be open sea. That's how it feels. Um wh- let me ask you this. Is, is there any other projects you admire in this space? Yeah, for sure. I think Yuga Labs, no question. Um 
people compare you guys a lot to cool cats for some reason. I don't know why. Because it's because it's cute. Because they think they think cool cats is shares the same narrative of, as us, which is cute and inclusive. Yeah. But they're literally called cool cats, so you can't be cute and cool. It's mm. not how that works. They're two. One's a synonym, and one's like they're like they're opposites. Yeah. Cute and cool is like opposite. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't know why people think cool cats are so competitive to pudgy penguins. I actually like totally don't even think because they might do toys or they might want to be IP. Yeah. I'm like not even afraid of cool cats, even remotely. Mm. I think like, I think we beat them a long time ago. I think we beat them the day I took over truthfully. Yeah. Um, and I don't think they'll ever come. I don't care who you hire, who you bring on, who you raise from. You know, I, I just, I, I don't believe in that IP whatsoever. Just my opinion. You told me a story behind the scenes on a negotiation you had with them. Is that something you'd ever share publicly or no? Uh, I don't want to cause beef. You know, I feel like, I feel like it would just make them look bad and make me look better. And that's like, yeah. not, that's like, not what I'm trying to do. You know, I, I it would be good for your seed phrase though. But. <laughs> We're trying to get the alpha here. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 nah, I'm, I'm, I'll, that's not who I am, but I, I just don't think they're, I, I never, I mean, it looked better at a 15 youth floor price, but doesn't to me, I just, I don't, I don't see that touching young kids from a yeah. branding perspective, but we'll see. Is there anything you feel like the community can help do to push Pudgy forward? Uh, so the problem is that I'm facing now and that I'm like realizing is like Pudgy Penguins is OG. People have been around for so long. So like, how do you keep them excited? Like, let me give you some stats actually on that. So within... 30 or 90 days or less, 40% of holders have been around. The other 40% come from over a year. And then the rest is between 7 to 30 days. You guys took over pretty much when? March? Yeah. So April, March, April. So April. there's pretty much about 40% of your holders have came at the same time you've came in. Yeah. So so walk me through the that problem that you were talking about. was like, what? Like, how can a community actually help push you guys forward? Is there anything possible? Yeah, just support us, pay royalties if you can, engage with our posts. And, you know, the thing that I'm trying to do right now is, like, how do I rally people to just take initiative themselves? Mm-hmm. You know, like, we've we started to see a little bit of that, like, com- you know, members making events or, like, making their own spaces or like making their own content. Mm -hmm. And that's been the hard part, right? Because in the catch 22, we have a a huge holder base of like amazing builders, but they're like building their shit, you know, like they don't have time to do the other stuff. And then like some of the other P it's just like, it's like an interesting blend. Uh, And that's one thing that I've been kind of struggling on is like, I don't want to make it like a reward system mm. because then then that becomes like ungenuine sure, yeah. so like you know what i mean because like i i like there's a way you could gamify it but that's not pure you know and do i have to go on a you know on an inner igloo which is like our bi-weekly meetings and do i just like you know re- that that's like one thing that i'm just like struggling to get across right now is just how do i I'm starting to do it. So like what I'll do is if a community member comes to me, like I'll empower them. Like I'll give them a stage with like our audience and like our social media. But Mm -hmm. that's one thing that I'm really working to figure out right now is, um, it's exactly that. Just, well, let me ask you this. If I owned, not if I, let's say I want to put my pudgy penguin Mm -hmm. right to work. What would be one aspect of the business in the content creation term that can help move the space forward or move your? I mean, I love forward. when people make products with penguins, uh, no. but I think like maybe there's another Instagram angle. Maybe you want to make comics. Maybe you want to do a, a children's mm-hmm. book. Maybe you want to do like you know, just because I'm doing stuff. Maybe you want to create a story. Maybe you want to animate it. You know, one thing we're really focusing on, you know, is like yep. really animating yep. these pudgy yep. penguins and bringing them to life. But this is, uh, you know, just like put it on a t-shirt, you know, try to do a start of spaces with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this is what I try to empower. Nice. Is there any companies you compare yourself to and pudgy? Like Apple, Yuga, for example, obviously like, again, any companies you like, Hmm, if I was in a perfect world, this was the company vision or this is how I want to land. I like Squishmallow from a, from a consumer product, good standpoint uh 
I don't know. I think because it's that, that tech layer that I don't think has been done yet. I think it's like a mix of a couple other companies. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a mix of a, of a, a group, but. Nothing at the top of my head that I can think of that I think is an instant comparable. I think this is like a very unique business. Uh, but honestly, probably be Disney. What am I saying? <laughs> yeah, it's Disney, dude. Yeah. Like this is this is where I would love to take, like I would love to take this club penguin happy feet. It's where these penguins deserve, dude. Yeah. Penguins are a great IP. And the thing is, is nobody's built the penguin character the same way they've built a lion or a dog or a cat. You know? Like mm-hmm. the penguin has that potential yeah. because like they're so funny they waddle and they're like so cute yeah. and like they eat fish and they're friendly and they're in zoos like they're the perfect animal but no one's built a really great brand around the penguin and i think i'm I'll, I'll maybe the first to do it um what is one partnership that you would love to do disney i want disney to make my film you, so the movie you guys want to make a, a movie, movie a show and you know Disney owns Pixar, so there's like subsets there. Yeah. Dude, I'm the thing is, I don't know if you saw, you'll see Peter's animation this week, but yeah. like these things animated, and I think like you can look at Mario, uh, that Mario trailer. You see the penguins. I'm telling you, the penguins are stars. Like mm. people, like it's just a, it's just a star character. Um, if you were to ask me anything, if not, um, I think there's a really great symbiotic re- relationship between us and Facebook. As weird as that sounds. That's interesting. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, this is more of like, I don't think it's like a partnership, I think. But I, I think it's like more of like an ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Maybe it, it is a partnership, but like an ecosystem play. I actually think Facebook would be great on our cap table, as weird as it sounds. Because I think we solve a lot of Facebook's problems. Like, you know? Like Facebook, huge con they get is social media and the effects it has on your mental health. <laughs> well then you could you know owning a thing like pudgy penguins like totally like debunks that just mm-hmm. like okay well what about the positive things it has on our mental health look at this company pudgy penguins that we're a part of that is just like n- doing nothing but uplifting our users so at some point you know that's content freedom and, and that's not facebook's fault um and then i also think that if they really believe the metaverse is the future they're going to have to have a Trojan horse from a web three side that attracts the purists. And I think we could do that. You know, Mm. I I think again, I'm just thinking about it. I think there's like really good alignment there. And if you like look at some of their products and and you could like integrate pudgy into Oculus and and kind of what they're doing with horizon. And they like, they also like love consumer product goods, right? Oculus, they've gotten into that world. That's a huge vertical for me. You know, I'm building more than just a toy little alpha. Like this toy is not just a toy. Like it comes with a digital, like gamification experience. that's never been done before. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also valuable to a group like that. Like I just see like, and I want the masses, dude. Facebook wants the masses too. Like what better way to invade the masses than with cute little pudgy penguins? I mean, it fits perfectly. Our brand colors are the same, you know, like are this like these shades of blue? Like I'm, ta- I'm telling you, this is on footage. We'll talk Facebook and us. We'll, we'll do something together. I know it. It's just too much of a fit. I just wouldn't know what Zuck would think, like why they wouldn't. It's like too, like the, it's like a perfect puzzle piece. We, f- we fix, we solve so many problems for them that, you know, they don't even realize yet, I don't think. So, I think that will happen. I hope it does. I it think will. it'll be good for Pudgy. I would love to I hang think it'll Zuck. be big for Web3 overall. I think me and Zuck would get along great. I can see it. I think you'd probably boss him around for a little bit, though. I, I, yeah, I mean, if we hooped, he'd have a problem. <laughs> like, any, of, any of these CEOs would want to hoop with me, bro. I came, I, I pulled up to the game today, just so you know, in the car. I was like, I'm going to completely... Oh, these two! <laughs> I, I literally, I, I put my Kobe's on. Those are some crazy Kobe's, by the way. You know, and, and dude, you, bro, wait till I wait, wait till I come with next week, bro. I'm oh, gonna bring, sh- I'm gonna <laughs> blow everyone's mind, bro. With this next pair, I just Kobe'd oh. out. I was like, bro, I am going to ball because I remember I told you I missed last yeah. week and I was so pissed and I got in, I got in an argument. Luca had a dream about me yeah. last, last week that he can wake up and cross me up. Bro, but I've hunked you today. I th- I'm gonna literally dream about that step because you came and I stepped to the left and I just drained did, it leading up. It's that same shot twice. you hit on me before. Yeah, it's literally the same shot you hit before. 
I live for that, yeah. bro. In another world, I would have been an NBA player, bro. <laughs> it's my biggest regret. If I knew I was going to be this big, I would have just literally shot the hoop all day. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I would have literally, because I'm the type to do that. Like, that's my, like, I'm so competitive. And if I know what I need to do to do something, I'll just do it. Yeah. If I knew I was going to be this big, I would have literally sat 12 hours a day. I wouldn't have went to school. Nothing. I would have just shot the ball in the hoop. What are you, like, 6'5", right? Dude, I'm way taller than that. Yeah, you're, like, fucking. Dude, I'm, like, 6'7". Yeah, you're like, like a NBA official. Like, yeah, I can, yeah, for sure. I can. I'm, I'm in the league. Yeah, I'm in the league. It's just the skill set that's missing. No. Um, hey, anybody who wants to pull up and get some work for me and Luca? Yeah, pull up. every Sunday, Sunday, Miami, baby. Just hit us up. We'll make. I, it I know that the Yuga Labs boys are here, so come on. Oh yeah, up. that would be fun, dude. <laughs> Penguins versus Apes. I sent them back to the lab. I sent them back to the lab. Send those Yuga boys hilarious. back to the lab. They wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> uh, yo, by the time this will be out, we'll probably be closer to Art Basel. So, cool. anything you want to talk about for the Art Basel event? You guys pull have up, coming up? Pull up, dude. Winwood. Just south of Winwood, just north of Winwood, a little bit in the hood. So, come <laughs> so on, there's going to be a event, December there you 1st. Go. December 1st, baby, Thursday. Awesome. Cool. If you stick with us this long, uh, I'm personally giving away a little pudgy. I don't know if Luca wants to give away anything away. Luca? No, I'm not giving away a little pudgy, dude. I'm, I'm I'll gonna... do it. I'll do it for him. Okay. I'll give away a little pudgy. Make sure you guys like, <laughs> comment, check us out on Twitter. Luca, thank you so much for hopping on. Anything else you want to go over? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right, guys, Seed Freeze out. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.